As a kid, I always knew I was supposed to be an athlete on the hardwood floor, on the basketball hardwood floor. I really knew nothing else. I slept, I ate, and I breathed everything about basketball. I lived to be better because I knew one day I was going to be dunking on LeBron. That was, or as a kid, I was going to be yamming on LeBron. <laughs> that had always been my dream, was to be the first girl to go to the NBA, really. For Raina DeBose, basketball was life. When she came to Virginia Tech as a freshman from Columbia, Maryland, it was just one step in a journey she had mapped out for herself long ago. Just one piece of the larger picture she had envisioned for years. She had big dreams, and she had the talent and drive to make them reality. But in 2002, Raina's life took an unexpected turn that would challenge her in ways she'd never imagined. The team was scheduled for team pictures, and Raina wasn't feeling well. She still felt like she you know, had the flu, whatever, and uh, she said she didn't feel like coming over. So the coach made her come over. They took the picture, and then she said, you know, we'll get you over to student health. After that, I think they sent her to the hospital, and that's where they determined that she had bacterial meningitis. At that point, they airlifted her from Montgomery County Hospital to the UVA Medical Center. And um, the head coach, Bonnie Hendrickson, she got in her car and drove up there and probably got there pretty close to when the helicopter got there. After a few days, it was pretty evident uh, of what was going on. Bonnie and I had gone down to the cafeteria just to get a bite to eat, and we came back up, and there was a priest in the room, and the family was there, and uh, everybody was very, very upset. And I was, you know, at first I thought, oh my gosh, what happened? And then to wake up out of a coma one day, to have a stranger, which was my plastic surgeon standing at the end of my bed, tell me I might not ever be able to compete again. That was one of the hardest things I'd ever heard. It wasn't that I had a broken ankle or I had a bum knee or something like that. It was, hello, Raina. My name is Dr. Katz, and I'm sorry to say, but you have bacterial meningitis, and I'm going to have to amputate all four of your limbs. For me, that was my day of weakness. And as an athlete, all I knew was never let your opponent see your weakness. And this day, I cried. And I cried. And two hours later, I was still crying in front of this man who just delivered some cockamamie news to me that I had no idea what he was saying. And the only thing I could do was look at him and just say, Doctor, am I ever going to be able to play basketball again? And the reason why I'm still great friends with this man today is because he looked me in my eyes and he said, Raina, I would never tell you no because I can see it in you right now. You won't be able to compete at the same Division I level you first competed at, but I definitely see you playing again. Realizing she would probably never face LeBron after all, Raina began to map a new path forward. Ultimately, she landed back in Maryland, where her love of basketball began, and discovered her new passion, coaching. I know she, when she first graduated, when she first came back, she probably didn't see coaching in her future, but really, I can't see her doing anything else. You guys feeling mentally tough tonight? Yeah. Mentally tough that if something breaks down in the offense, you're not going to be looking over the sideline. Coach, what do we do now? Without mental toughness, it's hard to win a game. My favorite quote, without struggle, there is no progress. Let's get out there and let's play some Mustang ball. Let's have some fun tonight, guys. She had to go through a lot. That was really difficult for her. And she brings that to the court and to our practices and really throws that on us to be tough. She has something to give to the kids. And I think they enjoy her. I really do because she has a love for the sport. The effort was great the first quarter. One turnover, second quarter, six. We have to slow down. We have to, again, come back to this word, discipline with the ball. You know, she loves to win, but it's not all about winning. It's about growing as a player. It's about getting better on and off the court and the field. It's, um, you know, having fun, but also doing it to 100%. So we got to come out the gate the second half, and we got to win this quarter by 15, and we have to win the fourth quarter. 
know, the interesting thing about Rain is she doesn't hide any. You know, she's walking in the hallway, sometimes she has one arm on, sometimes she has two. You know, and for her, it's just part of her daily life. You know, and she kind of lives and breathes it. And she's the first one, one to mention, you know, this is what I went through. Without struggle, there is no progress. Raina's life embodies that truth. The drive, the inner fire that propelled her to some of her biggest wins is the same fire that has kept her moving forward through some even bigger losses, both on the court and in life. Being able to withstand great force without bending and breaking. And I think my last 14 years, I've been tougher than I ever thought I could be. Everything that she had as a teenager, she has now with um, an additional perspective, you know, a perspective about life. The only thing that's changed is the way that I look. Like that fire still burns within. Mentally, it still burns within. And I still have that desire to be the best and to want to win. She's very determined, and that gives us that fire as well to keep going and keep playing. Without struggle, there is no progress. That's one of the common themes of hers that you'll always hear her talk. And she can speak on it because she's been through a lot. She's much more of a success story, you know, than a sob story. Congratulations, fellas. Win well earned, win well deserved. That's what it looks like when you grind it out, you stop thinking about how tired you are, and mental toughness kicks into play. That's what a congratulatory win feels like. Great job. I am extremely proud of you guys. We always talk about it's not about wins and losses. You know, and for her, it, it is about a win. You know, she's someone who has taken that challenge and won. Because in life, you win some and you lose some. But at the end of the day, the real question is, how do you persevere? How do you bounce back to who you are and what you know? I stand here today, 34 years old, in the greatest shape, in the greatest mentally tough position I've ever been in my life realizing this is exactly where I'm supposed to be and I won't change it for the world.